Within the Imperial High Command, Vader was usually the one in ultimate charge, but as we know, Vader is ruthless and punishing with all of his underlings and is quite fond of killing any of them, those that displease him in just about any way. However, one group of individuals that Vader has no authority over, either to command or kill, is the Emperor's Royal Guard. Unless Sidious gives him explicit permission, Darth Vader is unable to touch any of them in any way. This was also something that Vader disliked about the Red Guards, which was why he was so fierce whenever he got the opportunity to test their loyalty to Sidious. However, there was one occurrence when Darth Vader straight up murdered an entire group of royal guards right in front of the Emperor. So why did he do this? And more importantly, why did the Emperor allow this to happen? Well, my friends, this whole story rests in the Legends comic run of Darth Vader and the Ninth Assassin. This story has many twists and turns, and the murder of the royal guards is only the beginning. So my friends, let's open up another holocron and discover the truth behind the event known as the Hindsnake Plot. Before we continue with the holocron, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Onasaber. Onasaber is one of the industry leaders in producing high-quality custom and replica sabers, as they specialize in creating a variety of incredibly durable and realistic blades. Choose to walk either the paths of the light or the dark, become a warrior for the forces of good, or a conqueror for that of evil. Claim a replica saber or a themed saber for your own. Right now, Ona Saber is offering a deal of free shipping and 30% off all of their sabers. So be sure to check the blades out in the description down below and begin your journey from across the galaxy. We enter in on Vader resting in his meditation pod in the Emperor's Palace on Coruscant, when suddenly he is called into the Emperor's throne room directly. Striding past a group of about six royal guards in the hallway, Vader enters the throne room. You called for me, master? Vader says as an introduction. Yes, my Sidious begins, but he is cut off when Darth Vader suddenly lunges forward, ripping the Emperor away from his throne with the Force and tossing him across the room. This seemingly aggressive action was met with surprise by the two royal guards, who flanked the throne. They were about to move in and attack Darth Vader, but then Vader immediately force pushes the throne backwards and straight out of a large viewport window where it then explodes. A bomb had been attached to the bottom of the Emperor's throne, and Vader sensed it only in time to save his master's life. The explosion dumbfounded the two royal guards, and Palpatine was still picking himself up off the floor when Vader turned on them with murderous intent. He then proceeded to lift both of the royal guards off of the floor in a forced choke, while saying, you have failed to protect the Emperor. You deserve to die slowly, but I don't have the luxury of time. Vader then tosses one of the guards straight out of the window following the chair, as the other guard begs for his life through the force choke, desperately clinging to life. Vader, though, then tosses him nonchalantly out the window as well, with the guard plummeting down to the Coruscant skylines in the depths below. The six remaining guards that were previously in the hallway now formed a formation, as Vader paced up and down their lines, calling them incompetent and even accusing them of conspiring against their emperor. Two of the guards kneel in shame, admitting their failure and asking Vader to take their heads as punishment. His lightsaber already ignited, Vader obliges their request, swiftly slicing the throats of the two guards in one sweep of the blade. After this, he deems the remaining four to be loyal and begins immediately giving them orders. Finally, Vader approaches his master, with the two of them deciding it was extremely dangerous that they did not sense a plot to kill the Emperor, but much worse, they didn't sense that the bomb was there in the first place until the last moment. Sidious determined that their vision was being clouded, not by the Jedi, but by a much more powerful foe. He then ordered Vader to get on the case, but warned him that this enemy could prove extremely dangerous. And that is the moment that Vader is permitted to execute the royal guards. Only in the event that they fail to protect the Emperor himself is Vader allowed to punish them in any way he deems fit. For any of you wanting to read this story for yourself, definitely check out Vader and the Ninth Assassin for the entire story. But for this holocron, we are going to continue on with the tale ourselves. Lord Vader would then locate the source of the assassination attempt, which would be a dark side cult known as the Hind Snake. The Hind Snake would trap Vader, and the Elder would begin to explain that they had desired to kill the Emperor for a very long time, as their religion showed some sort of prophecy that spoke of a black armored warrior that would one day come to the cult and eventually become their leader and new Emperor. 
Using the Force, the cultish then showed Vader a vision of him killing Obi-Wan Kenobi and triumphing over Sidious, all while bearing the mark of the Hind Snake on his chest, wielding ultimate power and the armies of the Hind Snake cultists, a new dark side organization. All of the cultists were fanatically loyal to Vader and ready to serve. However, Vader simply refused, deeming them weak, and killed every single one of them present, ending the cult then and there. Following this, Vader would have a showdown with the man known as the Ninth Assassin, who was the last of their order and the one that put the case to murder Palpatine, the one who placed the bomb on his throne. After a grueling battle, Vader would kill the assassin and return to the Emperor to report all that had transpired. It was only after this that he would learn a shocking revelation. Darth Sidious was behind the cult all along. The entire cult and plot, up until and including the assassination attempt on himself. All of this turned out to be a convoluted test of loyalty for Lord Vader. Sidious had known about all the events because he had designed them himself. This also explains their vision being blocked, as Sidious was never blocked in the first place, but he had in fact been clouding Vader's mind instead. Sidious would not reveal this information to the Dark Lord, but allowed him to labor under the assumption that he had truly uncovered a plot against the Emperor's life. This shows just how vile Palpatine actually is. He made this whole convoluted plot just as a test of loyalty, and in doing so, he allowed, or not even just allowed, but encouraged the death of so many people that were loyal to him. Those four innocent royal guards who were genuinely there just doing their duty. All of them completely and totally loyal to the Emperor the entire time. They all died for nothing, as there was no way they could have stopped a plot against the Emperor that was designed by the Emperor himself. A truly heartless and cruel being Palpatine is, as this is pretty horrendous even for Sith standards. But no one said Sith valued the lives of their underlings at all. But with this raises an even greater question. Despite all the opportunities to betray him, why is Vader always loyal to his master? This wasn't the only time Vader has promised a way to destroy the Dark Lord, or even the only time he has given a reason to destroy him. It was both here with the Hindsnake cultists, and again when Vader uncovers the Myrrh Talisman that he has offered ultimate power along with the vision that shows him triumphing over the Dark Lord. And yet shockingly, Vader refuses. The only time Vader actually attempts to overthrow the Emperor post Mustafar was when he was trying to get Luke to join him on Bespin. But we all know that was simply a lie to coerce Luke to come with him. It is a curious thing that Vader continues to protect his master. It's likely because of a couple of reasons. Firstly, Palpatine has done such a good job at keeping Vader in his place that overthrowing the Emperor seems unthinkable. From Vader's armor being conductive of Force Lightning, to Sidious frequently proving his superiority and command over the Force, Vader is wise to know that trying to come against the Dark Lord, even with an army or special talismans of power, is practically suicide. Secondly, and we've mentioned this in Holocrons before, Sidious is all Vader has left in the galaxy. Vader ensures that Sidious never replaces him because he had everything taken from him, and Palpatine is the last thing that gives him any meaning. It's not until Luke comes along that conflict begins to stir between Vader's spirit and the Dark Lord, as now he has an opportunity to not be alone. But anyway my friends, this is the story of how Vader killed an entire group of royal guards and got away with it. There is only one other time when Vader force choked a group of guards, but in the end Sidious retaliated against him, shocking him with force lightning and forcing him to the ground. Only in the case of the Emperor's life being at stake, or the Emperor ordaining it himself, does Vader have the ability to kill the guards. But anyway my friends, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on this moment in the Hindsnake cult? As always my friends, may the force be with you, thanks again to our sponsor, and have a great day.